run stop bit, whatever memory bit you link here needs to be high for the trend recording to to take place. If this is low, you won't see any action going on on the trend variable on the HMI. So I mentioned before you can have a total of eight trends with eight curves per trend. In my subdivision of analog, there's eight curves available. I've only defined one, my analog input. But within the curve is where you actually define the operand that you want to represent. So if I right click and go to properties, I've given it the name of analog input zero. I've defined my data operand as MI2, which again was the the scaled or the linearized output from the linearization function block in the latter of this program was MI2. That's why I've linked it here as MI2. I've defined my Y min and Y my max as 0 and 10.0 volts or 100 with a decimal format of 3.1. So that's all you really need to set up the actual trend if you want to display that on the HMI. It's using again under the graph menu and trend. I've drawn out my trend variable. If we open it up, you can see you have the ability to define the points to display, the number of ticks, uh, how much history you want to be able to scroll through in that variable, uh, colors and date format. But you can see I've defined my curve as analog input zero under the curve menu. And you'll also notice that there's a link property. It's important to point out that this link is not relevant to the information that you want to display directly on the, on the trend variable. So the link really holds the value that is the current active trend. In this case, it's not such a good example because we only have one curve that we're displaying on the trend variable. But say we had, you know, three analog inputs that we wanted to display. We had analog input 0, 1, and 2. The link would hold the, the value of the trend that's active, the one that's forward on the graph. So if we had analog input 1 active, it would show a 1 in this MI100. If we had analog input 2 as the active trend, it would be a 2 in that MI100 variable. A lot of times people will link this bit to, for example, MI2, and that would be incorrect. You don't want to link the variable from the trend to the actual source data, you know, MI2 in this case. The link needs to be the next available memory integer because it holds the active trend. The information for the trend that we're actually displaying is is defined in this analog input curve. And we define which trend we want to actually attach it to with a drop down on the first appearance curve as well. So this is where we're saying we're using our analog trend and we're displaying our curve analog input zero. If we had multiple trends defined, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we'd be able to select which one we want to attach it to from the drop down of the attach menu. So that's really the majority of what's going on in the program here. Um, we've, just to reiterate once more, we've defined in the hardware configuration our analog input, our analog output. We linearize the value via the ladder code. And we displayed on the HMI our trend variable our meter variable, as well as linearized solely the MI0 output in this variable numeric. And I guess uh, one more thing I could point out as well, um, whenever you're using the analog inputs as a voltage or a current, you do have to, you know, linearize it as we went through here by the ladder or the HMI if you want to be able to see engineering units. However, if you are inputting a thermal couple, for example, I'll select my 
analog input 1 as a type K thermocouple. When you define thermocouples, there's no need to linearize. Uh, the value that's held, in this case, MI4, will be the actual temperature value. Uh, the operating system of the controller will automatically scale it for you, so there's no need to perform linearization if you're using a temperature sensor, whether it's thermocouple or, you know, PT100 RTD. The value that's held in the associated register, MI4, is an actual temperature value. And it does have one decimal place of accuracy. So if my sensor, my thermocouple input, had a value of, let's say it was 75.6 degrees, the value that's stored in this MI4 would be 756. It automatically programs in a one decimal offset place as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Whenever you're using a voltage or a current sensor, you need to perform linearization to go from the bitwise values to your engineering units. However, if you're using a temperature input, it automatically is scaled for you via the operating system to be in the, the actual temperature Fahrenheit or Celsius values. So that's just one, one minor thing to keep in mind as well. It uh, makes a little, your life a little bit easier if you're using a temperature input. There's no extra linearization or scaling required. And that's really all the information that I wanted to cover today. Um, if there's any other questions, we'll leave the webinar open, and you can ask any of the questions. We'll be here to answer them. Uh, one last thing I want to point out, too, this webinar will be available as a recording to review at a later point. I should put it up uh, within today or tomorrow. It'll be available with all of our other recorded webinars as well. Um, I'll show you how to find that. If you go to the website forum.unitronics.com, generally the latest webinar will pop up in this highlighted section. But if you go to the blogs, you can also find all of our other webinars as well under the webinars collection. So if you click the link for webinars collection, you can see all the previous webinars that we've done, PTO, Modbus, SD cards. And just as a sample, so you can see what it looks like, We'll have the recorded video in YouTube format linked directly on the page, as well as any of the questions and answers that people have asked throughout the webinar. And the demo file and also the PowerPoint that I went over will be available as well. So you'll be able to get this example program, the PowerPoint I went through earlier, which I guess some of you might have missed as I wasn't showing my screen properly in the beginning. But that full PowerPoint example program and recorded videos are available on our forum.unitronics.com and it will generally be the first thing that pops up. If you just go to unitronics.com support tab you can link the forum as well. So if there's no other questions um, thank you for attending. Uh, okay yeah there's one question about the, the screen navigation subroutine um, there's really not a whole lot to it. I just put three buttons on here, F1, F2, and F3, to navigate between my startup screen. I'll show you here. On the main screen, I had navigation for the main logo, the screen you're on right now, our analog output and input demonstration, and also the the schematic for how we had it wired up. So that's all that's really going on in the screen nav subroutine, just a positive transition, jumps to these different screens, and it's always being called via the, the main routine so that we can continuously navigate between those screens. Um, but if there's no other questions, I'd like to thank everyone for attending, and I hope you